Hi everyone, welcome back to another 10 minute chat with Carl. Today we've got Ben from Ben's Watch Club on the channel. He's a YouTuber, also has a blog as well, and I met him at last year's affiliate gathering and he is coming to this year. So I wanted to get him on this show, have a talk to him and see what he's been up to. So Ben, welcome to the show. Hi Carl, thanks for having me. Lovely to see you again, mate. Yeah, it was last year when we first met and it was great to catch up with you then. And I'm sure you've been up to a lot of things this year. And we're doing these 10 minute charts basically to just have a bit of a time out and connect with people who either came to the affiliate gathering last year or who are thinking of coming to the affiliate gathering for the first time and see what you've been up to last year. And maybe are you doing anything different this year? So we've got a few questions that we've been getting from our audience. So first of all, just tell the audience a little bit about yourself, who you are. Hiya. So, uh, yeah, my name is Ben. Uh, I'm from the UK, as you might have gathered by my voice. Uh, so I run Ben's Watch Club, which is essentially a wristwatch review website and YouTube channel. Uh, we've been going at Ben's Watch Club since 2019, um, but I've been doing YouTube as far back as about 2015, if I remember correctly. So I've uh, been through the ringer, shall we say, with the uh, YouTube. I've, um, I've uh, become pretty competent with it now. So I feel like I'm in a, in a good position to be able to help other people out. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just having fun with it, you see, Carl. You're a very modest man because your YouTube channel and your video content is absolutely excellent. Even though I'm not a big watch fan, I actually do watch it because I want to see the content, how you do it and how you record it. And it is top quality. So I will leave a link, obviously, to Ben's YouTube channel in the, in the description. You should highly check it out, even if you just want to go there for the quality of editing and learn a few skills there. Ben, what have you been working on last year compared to this year? We'll touch on that in a moment. But what was you doing last year? What was your focus? It's funny you should ask, actually, Carl, because our perspective on things has changed a little, or should I say the strategy's changed a little. Um, 2022 was a year where we really wanted to not automate things, because with YouTube, I'm not sure it's ever, you know, fully possible to be uh, completely automated. But uh, we definitely wanted to get some help into the business um, since about 2019 when we started. It's just been me and my wife essentially running the business. She does all the the brainy stuff, right? All the finance, the admin. I'm doing all the, the crazy creative stuff. I wanted to be able to free up some more of my time. So we were looking at getting people into the business to do something to take some stuff off uh, either my plate or Phoebe's plate to give us more time to expand the business in other ways or to work on side projects, which is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. But, you know, when you've got like 100 hour weeks at first, it, it seems impossible to take on anything extra. So, uh, yeah, we, we'll, we've looked into employees, contractors for things like uh, B-roll footage, video editing. Um, it was really tricky, to be honest, last year. We, we had a um, difficult time at first finding someone who would do a good enough job for a reasonable amount of money. Uh, it turns out it's quite a niche skill set, so which is hard to hire for. We did manage to get into a better position by the end of uh, 2022, and now we're able to make content quite a bit quicker, or at least make it with less of my hands on it, which is uh, good. 2023, on the other hand, is an unusual one. So I've certainly been looking into this AI stuff, right? And uh, it's not for so much use yet on like video content, but I've been like looking into it for my website. One of our big plans that we never really were able to get around to last year was giving myself more time to spend on our website uh, to be able to build that up a bit. We've actually got a fair uh, followership on the website, but that's something we really wanted to spread the risk with to get like a decent following on both. As such, going into this year, yeah, I've been looking into kind of shortcuts, I guess you could call them, or ways of uh, getting content out more quickly but retaining the similar quality that viewers would come to expect from the YouTube channel. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's always one of those cases if you want to expand, you often can't do it at the rate you want to do on your own. So you have to try and get people in. I know that myself and I know that it's uh, just as difficult with YouTube uh, as, it, as it is with blogs. Having that trust that they can kind of see your vision and do what you want to do, you want them to do. Uh, I, I know that's quite difficult, so that's really interesting. That that's, that's really good. So when you your channel is actually 
let's say you've started a new YouTube channel or you're incorporating yeah. videos into your blogs and it's not going really well, one of the questions we do get asked all the time is, how do you keep motivated? So if you put 20, 30 videos up on a new YouTube channel and it's not really doing much, what's the motivation to keep going? How, how do you handle that? So I think this is something that's definitely going to vary person to person. Um, when I first started out with YouTube in general, I did have a large amount of motivation to begin with, um, just inherently for video -y stuff. Uh, I felt like it was one of the only really decent skills I had was uh, being on camera or, or creating stuff in a creative manner. And uh, that helped. Although after a few years, you know, your motivation does kind of fade as with anything when it starts to become your job you inherently get less motivation. So following that, I think some of it, to be fair, is uh, the pure competition element, right? So I kind of treat YouTube website building, you know, this sort of thing with a slight, sh uh, <laughs> a slight uh, shred of ruthless competitiveness almost, like I treat it like a game. So it kind of gets me in that, that game show -y vibe. I almost make it into a bit of fun, like a, a challenge just to see how many views I can get uh, while not, you know, selling out or reaching to the levels that some people are willing to do it. So yeah. it, it is very challenging. In all fairness, though, uh, my motivation is quite inconsistent. So there's still certainly times where I uh, get less motivated, as you may have alluded to before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like I said, everybody's goals are going to be different, what they're trying to get out of it. I mean, and, and also as a business sense, it can be purely, you know, money. You know, some people can want to get to the point where they monetize their channel and, and make some money from it. And that can be a motivation for some people, especially if they're trying to you know, quit their job or they want to do it full time and they need to get to a certain level. So, yeah, there's all different types of motivation, isn't there, for, for different people. So I know after I met you at the first affiliate gathering, I was really motivated to jump into the world of video. And I honestly now it is it is a big, big part of my life on my blogs as well. I'm incorporating YouTube channels for all my blogs and looking into faceless videos and like you say video automation we're using you know ai tools to take blog posts and convert them into video scripts and then send them off to human voiceover uh, people who turn that in the scripts into actual words so it's fascinating stuff and I'm, I'm sure if anybody's coming to the affiliate gathering they'll be able to jump in your workshop and ask you some questions about that how you're automating the systems and making it easier because making video content is difficult and it is time consuming but I don't see why it's any less of a how why you should put any less of an effort into that over writing a blog post. I think now for me, I'm putting probably more emphasis on the videos. Definitely, so. yeah, yeah. I'd certainly say in terms of um, the the effort front, in terms of um, the size of the skill set required. I think YouTube's definitely more difficult. Um, I, I've done both of them. We've had far more success with far less kind of effort. I guess you could say. Uh, if you're measuring it on a, a correlation between effort and success, at least, um, the, the blog was definitely easier. There's just so many extra things to consider with YouTube. That being said, though, uh, certainly some of our blog success must have come as a result of the YouTube success and just having like inherent authority in the niche uh, from the YouTube channel. So uh, it could be warped a little bit, but um, I, do, I do find YouTube more rewarding regardless. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do. I do. And, uh, you know, there's... Well, I mean, we're sure we'll talk about this in other videos. Um, there's all sorts of elements with starting a YouTube channel, but you know, my initial stages was always just getting yourself out there and just actually making some hitting record and getting some video content out there for whatever your niche, your topic might be. And now, I recently watched a, an old Mr. Beast uh, video where he was talking about his channel, and he said, you know, you should not give up until you put at least a hundred videos on your channel, uh, and then you should judge how it's doing. And that kind of shocked me. I thought, wow, a hundred videos on a channel, that's a lot of work. But then I kind of thought, I don't think nothing about putting a hundred blog posts on my you know, website. So yeah. why should video be any different? He just says, obviously, you start off with reasonable, poor, probably poor quality videos, and it gets better and better and better. And hopefully by your hundred video, it's really, really good quality and you've stepped up the game. So uh, another question. So last year you was at the affiliate gathering, like we've mentioned. So what are you actually looking forward to this year's event? I know you're doing a workshop. You're going to be there. What are you looking forward to this year? A couple of things. So I think with regards to my own kind of uh, workshop that we've got going, I'm certainly looking forward to being as interactive as possible with people, uh, really trying to get the audience involved in a couple of different ways so they can experience something a little bit different, 
try and get them thinking a bit differently about the way that they're approaching the YouTube content. Um, I always find it satisfying when people will come up to me after like a, a video call or or even you know something like that, like a speaking event. Where they come up to me and they'll say something along the lines of, you know, that was really helpful. You kind of changed the way I thought about something like that. So certainly that from a kind of selfish perspective, uh, in terms of from other perspectives, um, I'm certainly looking forward to meeting more people that are kind of at a similar stage in their online career or journey as myself, because it's just difficult to meet people otherwise. Without events like Affiliate Gathering Call, you just would never meet YouTubers or or bloggers out in the wild because, you know, we're always sat in kind of real right now behind a computer screen. Uh, and, you know, the more I can meet, especially those that are at, like I said before, a similar point in their careers, it, I just find it extra useful. You can swap tips, share ideas. So I'm really trying to put myself in those situations a little bit more to, you know, benefit my, my own personal development and that. Last year, at the end of last year, we um, kind of switched some of our workflow to this software called Notion. So a um, bit tricky to set up. It's kind of like an advanced version of Trello, which you may have heard of. And yeah, we, we started to run all our kind of video planning through there instead. Got a bit more of a system about what videos I want to make and which videos really don't deserve to be made, essentially. So you can make a video about anything you want on YouTube, only certain videos we're ever kind of gonna do well. So uh, part of my objective this year is not only to be more decisive about which videos I'm actually gonna end up making. So yeah, I need to be more decisive about the ones I am making but also, I want to spend much more time on th things like thumbnails, like things that people don't normally consider because over the last few years, I've really been focused on making the narrative around my videos better, like the structure of the videos better. More recently, I've been emphasizing, you know, the importance of the title and the kind of more strategy with the thumbnails. Like, I think everyone always knows the better your thumbnail and title, you're probably going to get more views. But I've been really trying to delve deeper into the kind of psychology behind it, the uh, Photoshop work to get a really good looking thumbnail. So that's definitely one of my objectives this year is to get uh, something that's inherently really interesting and worth watching and then like present it in the best way possible uh, and really improve my skills because I think that's always been a, a weakness for me personally is, you know, making amazing thumbnails. Yeah, yeah, the def definitely thumbnails for me on my channel seem to be the make or break of a, of a video really. If anybody wants to get in touch with you or check out your channel or your socials, just let everybody know where they can actually find you right now. Yeah, sure. You can uh, check me out on YouTube at youtube.com slash Ben's Watch Club. Um, that, that's probably the best place. You can uh, always check out our website too at benswatchclub.com. And my email and contact information is on that site too. I really appreciate you jumping on the call and I'll see you at Affiliate Gallery on the 19th of May in York. Thanks, Ben. Sweet. I'll see you there, Carl. And hopefully you too watching at home.